Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next war recap video. And uh, as you can see, we have two wars that uh, I was away for. I was away for the weekend, like I said. Good to be back, but I missed two very close, very interesting wars that both pro both produced a lot of great attacks. Uh, so I'm choosing to take a look at the PWC war, but we could easily look at the uh, Six Schlitzes war because that had equally good attacks and was a lot of fun as well. So I hear, I wasn't really a part of it, because uh, like I said, I couldn't participate since I was away. Uh, but uh, both were good wars, and uh, just out of respect, we'll take a look at this war and uh, just kind of show what happened uh, to the bases, just so you guys can see. But anyway, um, it is the 4th of July, so you guys might hear some background noise. Uh, maybe not. My, my mic's usually pretty good about not picking that up. If it is, I can probably edit it out, but it's a possibility that it might sound like I'm, a, I'm in a war zone uh, when you hear this video. So let's hope not, that's not the case. And uh, anyway, this is the Six Schlitzes War. Let's go ahead and uh, go back to the war log and look at the PWC one, uh, which will have the attacks. We have a lot of attacks to look at today, so we'll get right into it as soon as we go through the bases real quick. Uh, we had four Town Hall 11s, so they did a good job uh, three-starring the bottom two, then got all our, of our 10s and below uh, three-starred, which is something that we're seeing a lot more, is all the 10s getting three-starred. Um, not that common, but it's something that uh, this clan was able to do. Uh, you can see one star, or two stars were missed because we did not three-star number three, and uh, number two got away with a one star, unfortunately. Uh, who knows what was going on towards the end of war. I wasn't there, so uh, could have been pretty uh, chaotic. And then a few little hiccups in the 10s. Um, honestly, I don't think the typically that all the 10s will be three-starred in a high-level war, um, but I might be wrong. Maybe uh, that's kind of old times, and now nowadays all the 10s are getting three-starred. Maybe that's the case, but I think they just uh, had a really good war. Something for our base builders, uh, me included, to sit back and try to figure out how we can pre prevent some of their attack strategies. And they use some very interesting stuff uh, that I haven't really seen before. And uh, out of respect for the bases right now, I'm not going to show it. But I might ask uh, a few of our guys if I can show their base, just because these attacks were pretty un uh, unusual. And I think it's something cool that uh, needs to be shown to people. Because uh, like I said, it's, it's awesome when this stuff gets out there and starts to inspire people to come up with even more new stuff. So anyway. Uh, that being said, let's take a look at some of the attacks that we did. Uh, starting with <clears throat> uh, Trigger Man taking on number four, and I was told there was a swag spell, and I can confirm that after watching it. Uh, he did swag his freeze spell, uh, which is really cool because uh, this is a Town Hall 11 versus a Max Town Hall 11 uh, besides the walls, so not an easy uh, three star by any means, but a pretty standard bowler attack comes in. Uh, on each side with a few healers, a few bowlers, then the main group up the middle. And uh, luckily, a few healers do uh, reroute back on into the base. You almost kind of need those outer bowlers to die, because like I said, it's very important that the healers get on the bowlers. Now, the warden does help with his ability, but um, that only lasts for a few seconds, and you need at least one or two healers in there uh, getting the heal effect, or else those bowlers, which don't have a ton of hit points, start to go down. So luckily, at least one healer goes... Uh, helps out in that area, and then the other two are chasing uh, around the other side for a while. But anyway, everything kind of goes off to the bottom here. They take out that first Inferno. Uh, those two healers actually do make the long journey on over and stay out of range of the air defense, so that's awesome. And everything just kind of moves around in a circle here. I don't think anyone could have predicted this, but uh, both his or all three of his heroes are still up, and the two, uh, the king and the queen, have their abilities. Plus, has a ton of bowlers, and because everything's so uh, bunched up, it's kind of like the HGHB strategy. Everything's so bunched up that the healers get that splash heal, and pretty much everything's at full health as they turn the corner here. Uh, we'll go ahead and go times two because it's just so slow as everything moves around. Basically, they're just going from defense to defense, taking out these trash buildings as they go. Uh, pops the king's ability right there, so he'll get out ahead a little bit, but he'll tank for a while, and things start to go through the wall here because he cleared out so much. Uh, the queen t makes her way on in, uh, losing quite a few troops here, but has the queen's ability and uh, I think like three healers on her. So she's doing just fine uh, at this point down to just the queen, but um, you can see he never used that free spell and uh, maybe there was a place for it, but I think he was kind of waiting for it and then just never really saw the use 
probably was going to use it on that Inferno, but right here it doesn't matter. Uh, so as, soon as, as soon as those Skellies go down, uh, the Queen takes out the Inferno and uh, swags the spell right there on the storage. So um, awesome attack to Trigger Man. Let's keep moving to number 10. Uh, we're going to take a look at two attacks by Ragnar, okay, and something that I actually haven't seen uh, in my clan in Genesis at Town Hall 10 is a mass miner because they're only level two and level four is max. So uh, it's not it's not like you can upgrade them to level three, uh, but still they're very powerful at level two uh, as shown by these next two attacks. And what you'll see here is he comes in with a kill squad, uh, creates the funnel, drops down a jump, a gold in the tank, then his heroes and I think about mm, like three Valks, four Valks. Um, everything makes its way in, then goes ahead and just spams those miners in. Uh, kind of a two finger drop you can see there's a group at the top and a group at the bottom and you'd think you need to funnel those in a little better but he kind of does it because uh, the queen deals with the cc troops she gets the dragon uh the kill squad got that first inferno the queen um so that's all important and then has these well, he had four heals now he's down to two because he dropped those first two uh, but the miners just make their way through they don't take that much damage because they go underground uh, the group up top did uh, a fair deal of damage. They're actually still moving through the base, and the queen is still up doing uh, some damage as well. She's out of range of all the defenses. So anyway, things kind of keep moving through. Uh, right there, a few miners go down to the inferno. But uh, one of the, the power of this strategy, because typically you can't heal troops when they're near an inferno. It just isn't worth it. But the miners, when they go underground, they can't be targeted by the Inferno, but they do get the heal benefit. So if you heal those miners, uh, even near the Inferno, when they're underground, they'll get healed back up to pretty much full health. Uh, so it's very powerful, unless they hit like a double giant bomb set, which typically will kill them because it's, it's like 500 uh, DPS, whereas they only have, or they have 550 HP, so it pretty much will kill them unless they're at full health. Uh, but besides that, they really are pretty much uh, pretty tanky, and uh, the Inferno isn't like unusual, unusually strong against heal like it is for any other troop. Um, you can heal them pretty much under an Inferno, and as long as they're not like uh, in too small of a group, when they go back underground, they will get that heal benefit uh, because the Inferno cannot target them. So anyway, things kind of thin out right here, but uh, the Inferno is the second to last building to go down, which shows that it's not as important to take out on a minor attack as it is on uh, pretty much any other Town Hall 10 attack. So awesome job there. Uh, one more attack by him, and then we'll get to the Town Hall 9s. Um, okay, so we have pretty much the same army comp. The one jump, the four heals. Uh, on this base here, Tim, number 12, uh, comes in with the same golem at a tank. It's down some wizards. Uh, and at this point, the golem's losing health pretty quickly, has the three-point defense on it. So make sure to create that funnel quickly. Uh, the jump, the th like three Valks, the queen, the king, everything moves on in. The funnel's not that great, but everything goes in, so it works out fine there. And kind of same as last time, a few miners at the top, and then the main group at the bottom here. Uh, still, neither Inferno's down, actually. The kill squad really didn't do much besides uh, get the CC troops, because those miners can't target air troops. So it was important to get that baby dragon and uh, everything else in there uh, taken out by the kill squad. But anyway, just keeping those miners healed, focusing on the large group up top, or the large group at the bottom. I think the top group was just a uh, funnel troop uh, to help his kill squad out. But right here, the queen actually will get that second inferno tower taken out right there. So uh, that's a huge help to the miners because even though it's not as important, it's always helpful uh, for it to go down. And then uh, right here, hitting a few giant bombs, but has them healed up. Uh, the queen sitting back behind them, and uh, they are just destroying this base. He actually crushes this base a lot worse than the last one. Um, so anyway, awesome attack has one heal spell left. Probably doesn't need it, but we'll go ahead and fast forward because I think he does drop it uh, on this group of miners as they move through. But still, I mean, I don't know how many that is. It's hard to tell, but looks like a lot. Looks like a ton of miners. Um, or maybe he doesn't use this last heal. So another swag spell. Um, we're seeing some very powerful strategies at Town Hall Ten in Town Hall 11, uh, some swag spells. So I'm not gonna get too into the uh, Supercell has to balance this, but uh, it's something for them to look at definitely because uh, we're seeing some very powerful strategies emerge, um, especially with the friendly challenge. People can practice, practice this so much. So anyway, not a bad thing, just something to t uh, keep your eye on. Uh, let's take a look at one HGHB because I uh, haven't, I mean, I did the attack strategy, but I wanna show um, some follow-up to that of people using it, and uh, we have 
Fahim doing a pretty standard attack. Goes ahead. I'm not sure why he drops the one giant out in front. Maybe to test for like spring traps so he doesn't lose too many. But that's kind of a weird place for a spring trap anyway. Uh, but anyway, uh, giants are being healed up. And they really don't go down with that many healers on them. Uh, the splash damage doesn't affect them. The point defense isn't that big of a deal. Uh, those giants do not die very easily under the heal. Um, but there go the bowlers, which are kind of hard to funnel in. So it does a good job getting them to actually enter the base. Or at least uh, like three of them. The other two are going around. Drops down the rage, the poison. Uh, those minions go down pretty quickly under the poison. And uh, the healers are doing a great job. They're getting the benefit of the rage that he used on his troops. Uh, everything's going down. And uh, like I said, because th things stack up on the walls, the splash heal is so helpful. He actually does bring a jump, which typically uh, you don't bring, but I think just to move his troops ahead a little farther. But notice how he let them group up before he dropped the jump, because he wanted them all to be together, getting the heal. And then uh, once it was time, drops the jump, lets them keep moving. Uh, nice uh, placement there. Uh, anyway, the hogs are coming and uh, they're taking out these outside buildings. Not doing a whole lot, but he does have the heal for when they head north because uh, at this point his troops are pretty spread out. He had a few balloons too, which is a nice touch, uh, but the hogs are the main star of the show from now on. Uh, they're going to head up north, take out these last few defenses uh, along with that heal. So anyway, uh, this base is pretty much crushed. It seems like we're going times two very early in the attacks because it's over so quickly. Uh, so far, pretty much every attack has been a blowout uh, if you count the first one uh, but anyway the skeletons do get on those hogs and uh, take them out but all the defenses are down at this point and uh, it's over the great thing about this attack is your heroes are almost always at full health if you do it right at the end of the attack so uh, it looks nice and you can even do a farming attack pretty quickly because of that so anyway uh, number 18 Shrek um, getting a little bit tired but I'll fight through it two more attacks to look at and this one I liked because it was so, it was kind of cheeky, but it was also so simple. Just drops down the heroes, that wizard for the funnel. And the queen, a little scary here. She could go to the outside, but he trusts that she'll uh, take out that cannon, then go back in for that air defense as soon as the actually the mortar goes down. And also, luckily, if she targeted that golem, that would be, she'd be in trouble there because the goal is just to get the air defense and the queen for the price of just his heroes. And then that golem and the CC won't do anything to the balloons and all the air troops. So a little bit, little bit of a risk there because there's no uh, guarantee that the queen's going to target that air defense or that uh, the golem won't make it out in time. But uh, maybe it gets lucky, maybe just uh, well planned, I don't know, whichever one you call it. But either way, the expos are on ground only, which definitely helps out. Uh, so the balloons make their way through pretty easily. Still has a ton of lava hounds up, just... Uh, one, or the second one busts right there, but still has <clears throat> one at half health and then two more at full health. Um, so had kind of like a penta attack, but with three air defenses and no queen. Uh, this is a pretty easy uh, three star. So many lava hounds just sitting there. I think the third one did bust, but uh, these next, <clears throat> excuse me, these next two uh, aren't going to. Uh, still has plenty of cleanup though, and uh, that golem actually will, will go down. So anyway, things are kind of clumped up, but he saved two balloons, which was very smart for cleanup. Uh, so as we fast forward, he drops those in uh, on the other side of the base to help with cleanup. Uh, nice attack to Shrek. Good job on that. And uh, yeah, very very well planned. And he actually brought a free spell at Town Hall 9, which you almost never see. But um, actually, I missed where he dropped it. Uh, maybe on like the air defenses or something. So anyway, uh, awesome attack there. One more as this video uh, wraps up, we want to look at, what is it, 23 uh, Rich. Um, there were so many good attacks that I'm not, I, I can't show just because I want the video to be about 15 minutes long. I can't talk for that long, except in my rare live base builds where I have to fight through it. But anyway, I uh, had to pick just kind of what I thought were the best, but there was a ton of great attacks is my point. Uh, we actually saw a couple of these... Uh, Valk baby dragon combos. This is only one of a few that I saw and uh, I'm not I'm not completely sold on it But it's getting the three star so I thought I'll go ahead and show it see if you guys see anything in it But to me it seemed like the baby dragons are kind of just Forgetting trash buildings, which I think is a lot to you know, because these take up ten troop space, so um, Not hating on rich or anything, but the strategy just doesn't seem like it's something to me uh, It is working though, and you can't argue with success. So maybe Maybe it has more potential than I see, but 
Uh, anyway, comes in with the Valks, the bowlers behind. Uh, CC of bowlers there, I didn't mention, but uh, Valk, bowler, baby dragon combo. Uh, keeping those Valks healed up, and that golem actually does a lot of damage, if you might have noticed right there, when it explodes. So keeps them healed up, uh, which is important, and they keep moving through the base. Uh, pretty easy funnel there for the Valks. But here come the baby dragons on like the outside of the base, and I guess they do get in and get some of these point defense taken out. I will give them that. They get the uh, archer tower, a few of those Teslas. Uh, this actually was a pretty nice attack with the baby dragons, because uh, they are getting a few defensive buildings rather than just trash. Um, but anyway, the last air defense will go down as soon as the queen gets in there to take it out. So once that's down, the attack is pretty, or the raid is pretty much over because uh, it still has all these baby dragons that can't be hurt that much by archer towers. Uh, nice poison on the king. Everything converges. Uh, so actually, I will give him credit that the baby dragons got pretty good value on this attack, but um, I'm still not quite sold on it. Maybe, maybe it's something that I'm just, uh, as a Town Hall 10, I can't see, but... Uh, I guess we'll have to wait and just kind of see how this fans out. Uh, but definitely a nice attack, uh, regardless, using this new strategy. Um, nice attack to Rich. Anyway, though, that is the recap. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Like I said, hopefully there's not too many loud noises in the background. Um, I'll do my best to take, get rid of that so it doesn't sound like I'm in a war zone. But anyway, uh, thanks for watching this one. A good war to PWC. They had a, uh, a very solid war, you can see here. As we scroll up, they uh, just those top two Town Hall 11s, uh, 55 on each of them. So anyway, was an awesome job. I think these, these are the Town Hall 10s that went up and did that, which allowed their Town Hall 11s to go down. Um, I will see if I can show some of these attacks, because they were absolutely insane, at least from my perspective, because I haven't seen anything like it before. So uh, tough war for us, but we'll bounce back. A few adjustments to make, I'm sure, and uh, we should be able to... Get back out there in the next few arranged wars we have and try to uh, put up a good performance and see if we can get the win. But I uh, had a good war against six Schlitzes, like I said. A little bit of redness in our war log, but that just means we're having fun and getting some close wars. So anyway, thanks for watching this one, and I'll see you guys later. Bye, Sacktron out.